so this morning I have my fasting, which I put in there, it is 86. And fasting should always be less than 90. And an hour after I eat, it should be less than 130. So here's the start of today, my fasting time, my result. Um, when I do eat my breakfast, I will put it here in the time. And then an hour later, I will put the time in the result. Um, as you can see, I kept a little log here. Got a little blood on it. <laughs> this just keeps me, gives me a log of what I'm eating, what works. Okay, so good morning. I just dropped the boys off at school. Um, you saw a little bit of my wake up routine. So I'll come downstairs and immediately what I'll do is I'll come over here to my little diabetes corner <laughs> and I'll take my fasting blood sugar. And then um, I'll, usually while I'm doing that, I have my coffee brewing in my Keurig and I'll sit down watch the news while my kids get ready and have their breakfast and I'll drink my coffee um, usually I'll take my vitamins too um, I take these prenatals two of them um, and I also do have calcium tablets so I'll do that and then I'll take the boys to school and then when I get back is when I start my breakfast what I found keeps me within range usually is or all the time is just two eggs for myself um, I'll also make an egg for my dog. I can add cheese to it too, and it won't spike my numbers or anything. So this will be my breakfast. It's just two fried eggs, a little bit of salt. Um, I didn't put any cheese on it today. And so yeah, so I'll eat this. I'll probably have a little bit, little bit more coffee. Um, and then I'm gonna get ready because today I'm gonna go meet with my nutritionist. Okay, so it's time to test my blood glucose um, for my one hour after eating breakfast. Um, I just went like 15 minutes over because I was trying to get ready in a hurry. Um, but now I'm going to do my one hour test and then I'm going to go see my nutritionist. One hour after breakfast or one hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> I am at 111, which is really good. I should be under 130. So I'm just gonna add a little comment there after my meal. And um, I have it all logged on my log there. Um, probably gonna eat a little quick snack, maybe like an Activia yogurt or protein bar, something like that, um, and head over to my nutritionist appointment. And um, I'll let you guys know how, how that goes. Okay. Okay, so I just got back from meeting with my um, nutritionist who was recommended or required for my gestational diabetes. Um, and it went really well. So if you just got diagnosed, um, you're probably gonna have to meet with a nutritionist to go over um, your blood sugar uh, numbers, what you're eating, what you should be eating, what you should not be eating, and other information that you didn't even think about so um, I met with her um, and it took about 45 minutes and what we did was we just kind of went over um, my numbers and she said the same thing my doctor said that my numbers are really good um, I'm doing the right things I'm eating the right things um, she basically asked me like typically what do I eat during a day um, and I let her know that I wake up, um, I'll have my, like my eggs for breakfast with maybe some cheese, my coffee, my vitamins, 
Um, my lunches typically tend to uh, consist of chicken. And one thing I'm really loving right now is the, the Costco roast chicken, which is only $5 and it's delicious. For $5, you get a whole chicken and um, I'll eat either the breast by itself with some steamed vegetables like broccoli or Brussels sprouts, zucchini, carrots, any type of steamed vegetable, really. And that always keeps my numbers within range. Things like cottage cheese, I'll have that for lunch or a snack with like nuts. Um, and the nuts that I put on to that would be like sunflower seeds and um, I even added pepitas to that. Um, I'll put that chicken on something like a salad. So at Aldi I get um, a big thing of this organic spring mix salad. Um, and it's like $4, a huge thing of salad. It'll feed me, my husband, my kids, lunches all week. So um, that's a pretty good deal. And I'll put the nuts on. I'll put on like a low calorie dressing on there. We told, I told her what I eat for dinners and that's usually either the chicken again or sometimes I'll have something like um, these green chili tamales that I get from Trader Joe's just because they're so yummy and here and there I'll have a little bit of carbs. Um, but they tend to, they typically don't spike my numbers so I'm not too worried about those. And either that or I'll have a steak, which I just picked up some more. I'll show you what I got from the store just now. And I love steak, so <laughs> I'm like super happy that I can eat steak more often. I probably have it maybe once to maybe two times a week um, at the most. Maybe this little like handout pamphlet, which I think is really, really handy. And I um, kind of wish I had this from the beginning of my pregnancy. <laughs> But if I ever decide to have more kids, this is going to be um, what I follow from the start. So it just goes over like why, why gestational diabetes happens. So you're more likely to get it if you've had diabetes in your family, if you are overweight, um, if you've had gestational diabetes before, um, if you have glucose in your urine. If you have a baby weighing more than nine pounds, which I've never had, I've never had gestational diabetes ever. Um, I don't feel like I'm overweight. I might have put on, you know, a few pounds, but she said I'm within range. Um, so, yeah, if you're a certain race or ethnic group, you're more likely to get it. So, don't beat yourself up. It happens. Um, we talked about the risks of what could happen to your baby. Mm -hmm. My main concern is delivering a huge baby, <laughs> which is gonna be more difficult. Also, babies that um, are, you know, born through gestational diabetes, they tend to be overweight themselves and have weight issues uh, later in life. So you just wanna take really good care of your baby's health, their nutrition, make sure, you know, make sure you're protecting them. Um, we went over foods to avoid and the funny thing um, she said was that I thought for sure I can't have any sweets but she said two things um, cheesecake and Hagen dazs ice cream will not <laughs> will not spike my numbers that content in those um, it makes your body work a little bit harder to digest the food so um, your numbers do tend to stay lower when you eat those your number will not spike but things that really you should avoid are like dry cereals, cold cereal with milk, um, cakes, cookies, candies, of course, syrups, um, juices. You don't want to drink too much juice, sodas, so on. Um, you want to be getting some exercise. We talked about even just light housework, you know, going grocery shopping. Those are enough. You don't have to be working out. Um, and starving yourself. Uh, we talked about how car carbohydrates are a big thing. So when you do check um, your labels and things, she said to look at total carbohydrates as opposed to um, as opposed to looking at like sugars themselves or you know etc. So on this, it would be 19 total carbohydrates, um, and for me. 
I mean, you also take out the fiber from the total carbs to get your carb count. So, but total carbohydrates is what you're gonna wanna look at. Make sure you're keeping your carbs lower. Um, you still wanna get like a tortilla in of whole wheat or a slice of bread, um, just to keep your energy where it needs to be so you don't feel like you're crashing all the time. Um, you wanna get your veggies in, things like that, your fruit. Um, no fruit at bedtime though which I thought was interesting. Oh, so we went over how many carbs we should get, um, how to spread them out. Um, uh, I really liked how she gave me these ways to spread out your carbohydrates. So like for breakfast, you should have one carbohydrate portion or about 15 grams. It could be a slice of bread or a tortilla, like with your eggs. Um, let's see for a snack, you could have one or two carbohydrate portions, 15 to 30 grams. So, uh, maybe a small apple or, you know, in your yogurt, if there's some carbs in that, usually about 15 carbs in a yogurt, depending on which one you get, uh, lunch and dinner, you want to have about three carbohydrate portions or about 45 grams. So salads for sure. You know, you're gonna have some carbs in your veggies. Um, you could have maybe some brown rice or quinoa, she said. Um, you know, you can still incorporate them, but you definitely wanna be careful with them. Bedtime snacks should always include a protein. Um, you should not include fruit or cereal at bedtime. So what I do is I have nuts um, by my bed, by my um, on my nightstand next to my bed. You could have a cheese stick or a hard boiled egg. You just wanna keep yourself kind of fuller overnight because if you're super hungry overnight, um, that can mess with your numbers, um, so on and so forth. Yeah, so that's about it. Oh, here's foods that are very low in carbs. You wanna keep your fats and oils high. Um, those are, they're, you know, they're better for you. At least three of them a day your protein foods, your steaks, your chicken, your eggs, fish, vegetables, non-starchy, your broccoli, your cucumbers, your celery, etc. cetera, um, so on and so forth. Um, I probably won't meet with her again. She said if I have any questions, I can always reach out to her, give her a call, so that was good. Um, my main concern was, do I have to keep doing this every day, you know, once I have the baby? And she said no, um, but that breastfeeding is really, really important. Um, some women, you know, choose not to, they don't want to, but it's really good for our health. Um, it'll help control our hormones and things like that. So, which is what I wanna do. I wanna exclusively breastfeed my baby. And um, we just went over the importance of getting enough calcium. Once I go to my six week appointment, I'll talk to my doctor about testing my blood again, my glucose, make sure everything looks good. You know, maybe a year from now, see my regular doctor and um, have her, you know, look into my blood sugars and things like that. So uh, it should go away, should be fine. Um, next baby, if I choose to have one, might not even have this issue, so. Um, another thing I found really interesting, she said that stress can really spike your numbers. Um, so also in this little booklet, uh, there's ways to, you know, have stress management. You know, do some yoga, breathe, breathe deeply. Um, she said if you can, avoid watching the news, just put on music in the morning. Um, you know, just, just relax, <laughs> which is, it's hard for you know moms and you have kids already and oh, life is stressful, but um, that is a big factor in spiking numbers. So anyway, <laughs> let me show you what I got from the store. So I did pick up some of these carb balance tortillas because some mornings, you know, I want some, I want a breakfast burrito or something a little different than just fried eggs. So. These have about six carbs each total um, once you take out the fiber and everything. So that's perfect. The sugars are low. Excellent source of fiber. 
Um, I've been loving, loving, loving steamed fresh Brussels sprouts. So I got about a pound of those and I'm probably gonna cook those up tonight along with um, some steak, which I am so happy that I can eat steak every day. Um, the Ralph's by me has amazing prices on little steaks. For six bucks, I got two of these, and honestly, like one would fill me up, but I tend to eat one and a half, and I share the other half with my son, my younger son. And um, this is a boneless tri-tip steak, really delicious. Uh, these Greek yogurts are good. I also like Activia, um, but this one tends to have a little bit more protein, um, lower carb count. Overall, it's about eight carbs. And this is a nice snack will fill me up. It's pretty thick, um, really tasty. And of course, for my coffee, I always do sugar-free creamer and some like a couple tablespoons of Splenda. That's so far my morning, and um, I'm probably gonna eat something now. I think I'm gonna go get something to eat, and um, I'll show you what I have for lunch. I'll test my blood in another hour and continue with my day in gestational diabetes. So I'll be back. Okay, so I decided I just wanted to make my own lunch instead of go out to eat. Um, I made a little chicken taco here. Uh, this is the carb balanced tortilla with about six carbs. Um, I s sliced up some of that uh, roast chicken. I put on one slice of the pepper jack cheese, lunch meat cheese and um, I put a little bit of salsa on top. And I also made a little side salad. It's just that salad mix that I showed you. Um, some of those little nuts, it's sunflower seeds, pepitas. And the dressing that I used was this Olive Garden dressing. Okay, so it's 1.39. Um, it's been about an hour since I had my lunch. I showed you what I ate, and I'm gonna go ahead and test my blood sugar now. Uh, then you'll wanna like rinse off your finger because I don't know if you've noticed on my little logs, I get little drips of blood on them. It's not a big deal, but kind of gross. <laughs> gross looking at least. Um, and while I was waiting for that, I also have been working on a little log book that I can keep in my purse. Um, I got it from the dollar store. This just cute little notebook. It's got a place for a pen here. And um, I have like the time, my fast, my, or my number for my blood. Um, here would be like, that's fasting, so I don't have to put what I ate, the time and what I got. Breakfast, what I ate, the time and what I got. Snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack. And then any notes I have um, about the day. So let's say something really stressful happened. Um, I could put that here. My dietitian said that things like dental work, things can really affect your blood sugar uh, as well as stress. So keep that in mind. That's something that you could put in your little notes section here. Um, and then you would want to keep all these logged and show to your doctor. I know that there are apps that you can download where all of this is in your phone. But for me, I kind of like to write it down and just hand it over to my doctor. She needs to look at it. Um, these have been really nice. But um, I have to keep asking for more copies or, you know. Um, this I can just keep in my purse. And so, oh, also I wanted to mention that even though certain things do work for me, like, um, you know, the things that I eat will keep my numbers down, they won't work for everybody. And everybody's fasting numbers are gonna be different. Mine just happened to be really normal, really good. Um, some women, they just cannot control their fasting numbers and that's okay and you might need to take insulin. Um, don't feel defeated. You know, the most important thing is your health and your baby's health and making sure that, you know, 
you deliver a healthy baby and that it's a safe delivery for you because there are complications that can occur and nobody wants to have to stick themselves with a needle um, nobody wants to take medicine like metformin um, but sometimes it's just your body really needs it um, so you just be honest with yourself be honest with your doctor and um, you know try everything you can but if you can, if you need the medicine then absolutely you know you're gonna have to take the medicine so just keep that in mind that not everybody's going to be the same everybody's reasons for getting gestational diabetes are going to be different so um, don't take my experience here as it should be what your experience is or how your numbers should be or you know some women, some women can have more sweets than I can have you know sweets seem to affect me a little bit more strongly than some women so anyway next up will be dinner and we'll continue with my log bye Okay, so I've got my dinner cooking, which is this steak here, nice and marinated. Um, I give it like five minutes to fry each side, and then I stick it in the oven for a few more minutes. Um, we've got the steamed broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Those are seasoned with some like lemon thyme seasoning, olive oil, and um, a little bit of lemon juice. And the boys are going to have a chicken stir fry teriyaki with rice, which is in the cooker. Um, Ethan's at football and Austin is at karate. So I've got to go get Austin in about 20 minutes. Dinner should be ready to go by then. And everyone will be home around 8 to eat dinner. <laughs> Seems really late, but um, we're busy. so. All right, almost done with my day. <laughs> okay, it's now after dinner. I'm gonna take my last reading for the day with my glucose. Come here. And I'm gonna take a bath and I'm gonna go to bed because I am exhausted. Tomorrow, I get to go and do my scan to see the baby, see how she's developing, how big she is. Hopefully, growing just fine. Nice. All right, so I had that steak and um, steamed veggies. And I'm at 100, which is perfect. Alright, have a good night.